Sri-Krishna-Chaitanya-Prabhu-Nityananda-Sri-Advaita-Gadadhara-Sri-Vasadi-Gora-Bhakta-Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yam <coughs> And uh, Rajasundra Prabhu asked me to speak <clears throat> a few words about the importance of uh, studying scripture. And uh, uh, the topic uh, of this discussion uh, will be uh, mostly inspired by uh, Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur. His uh, masterpiece, Jaiva Dharma. At the very end of uh, Jaiva Dharma, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur deals with a uh, very confidential topic. <clears throat> very last chapter of uh, Jaiva Dharma, 40th chapter, uh, starts with the question of uh, how to attain the highest perfectional stage of devotional service, which is called Prema Sampati Dasha. Uh, the state of attaining perfection in Prema, Prema Sampati Dasha. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that there is a certain sequence or certain uh, Krama in uh, attaining this highest stage, and you cannot really jump in this highest stage. <clears throat> and he said that the first uh, period or the first uh, stage uh, through which we have to pass before uh, we get to this highest stage, which is the stage number five, is called Shravana Dasha. Shravana Dasha was a stage of hearing, and primarily hearing uh, the scriptures. And of course, primarily studying Srimad Bhagavatam. And then next, Varana Dasha, the stage of accepting uh, certain spiritual identity. And then Smarana Dasha, the stage when we uh, cultivate uh, certain sentiments or cultivate this identity further. And then Bhava Pana uh, Dasha, the stage of attaining some spiritual sentiments. And ultimately, Prema Sampati Dasha. So uh, everything starts from Shravana, as we know. Shravana is the first uh, thing. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, why I took this particular uh, topic for our discussion, uh, he uh, very clearly says that it's not that any kind of shravana uh, can be considered beneficial for attaining the highest stage of spiritual development. Oftentimes we uh, stress the necessity of shravana, studying of the scriptures, but 
uh, very rarely uh, we go into the intricacies of how this shravana should be conducted to be ultimately successful and fruitful. And um, uh, so by explaining this general pattern that one has to go through certain stages, uh, starting with Shravana, uh, the Guru in uh, uh, Gopal Guru Goswami in Jaiva Dharma, he uh, is explaining how Shravana Dasha, what is Shravana Dasha. First, he quotes a very famous verse from the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, from the end of fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, when Narada Muni starts explaining to King Prachina Bharhiyo uh, the allegoric story about uh, King Puranjana. And there, Narada Muni makes this statement. Tasmin mahan mukarita madubi charita piyusha shesha saritah paritah shravanti so, <clears throat> uh, it's very interesting that first, uh, uh, to explain Shravana Dasha, uh, uh, he makes uh, or quotes this particular verse, and this particular verse explains the very essence of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. What is hearing Srimad Bhagavatam? Because uh, there may be many different modes of discussion of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> we can discuss Srimad Bhagavatam from many different angles of vision. We can discuss Srimad Bhagavatam, for example, from the Nyaya point of view, or from so many different angles. But it's not without a reason that uh, Gopal Guru Goswami quotes this particular verse from Srimad Bhagavatam because this particular verse from Srimad Bhagavatam explains what is supposed to happen when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam. What is supposed to happen? The transmission of the taste is supposed to happen. <laughs> this is the most important. Not the transmission of meaning in self. Meaning is just a vehicle to transmit the taste. Ultimately, this is what should be expected. Therefore, in this particular verse, it is said, then, tasmin mahan mukharita, when uh, this uh, uh, Madhubi Charitra, uh, when this Madhubi Charitra, the stories about uh, uh, the enemy of uh, demon Madhu uh, is being explained, um, or uh, are taken from the uh, mouth or from the yeah from the mouth of uh, Mahan, great devotees. Then piyusha shesha saritah paritah shravanti. It's as if the rivers of nectar are flowing. <laughs> so that's the first very important point uh, when we speak Shrimad Bhagavatam and we listen to Shrimad Bhagavatam. Uh, this point of uh, kind of uh, having taste uh, for it, not just, you know, for a dry uh, intellectual study of the book, but the taste. And therefore, uh, as a result of it, when these rivers uh, of nectar are flowing from the mouths of great devotees, then uh, those who listen this with very deep ears, garda, uh, Karnai. Uh, it's very um, special expression uh, that the ears should be deep. Uh, you know, basically you want to make your ears very deep so that uh, not even a drop of this nectar would uh, would be missed. <laughs> you know, Gadha Karnai. And everything should be contained within this big ears, you know. Therefore, you know, the, those who listen properly, their ears start growing and growing and they become really deep, <laughs> you know. The nectar has to come there and stay there and therefore they're listening with these deep ears uh, and, uh, uh, and they're not listening. Uh, they're pibanti, they're drinking this. 
Uh, so it's a special mode of listening. You're not just listening, you're just, you're just uh, drinking it. And Avitrishna, uh, you don't have any satiation. You're just listening and listening and listening and, and there is no stop of it. Uh, you want to listen more and more and more without any association. And the uh, sign uh, of the success that something really real happening when you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Tannas Prishat Asana Trit Bhaya Shoka Moha. Such people, uh, they uh, become free from uh, hunger, which is very relevant uh, <laughs> at that time of the day. <laughs> You listen and you don't really look at the watch, you know, when he will stop talking <laughs> because it's prashadam time and he is going over time. Uh, so uh, you don't feel this nas um, prishant asana treat. You don't feel the thirst. You don't feel bhaya, fear. Uh, you don't feel shoka. Uh, the grief, and you don't feel moha or bewilderment or um, material happiness, so to speak. You know, I'm so happy, everything is so fine. Uh, all this is being completely forgotten uh, if uh, hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam takes place. If this does not take place, it's something which may be similar but it's not exactly what is meant here by uh, Shravana Dasha. Shravana Dasha is a special sort of exchange between uh, guru and disciple when the guru is transmitting his taste directly to the heart of the disciple. And disciple very gratefully accepts uh, this taste and try to uh, keep this taste and uh, forgets everything else. Uh, and then uh, 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 and then um, the further discussion goes on, and in this discussion, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur makes the point that there are different kinds of hearing. The first kind of hearing, uh, he calls it Bahirmukha uh, Dasha, uh, the stage when the person is averse to hearing, the stage when the person does not really have the taste for hearing. It's not real, genuine taste. And uh, uh, everyone has to start somewhere. So that's uh, usually the beginning uh, or the starting point when we uh, hear so much about glories of hearing, but don't really have the taste, the genuine taste for hearing. Why? And the reason is very simple and important for us to understand. Uh, the taste uh, we only get for such things which uh, already made a samskara in our mind. If, for example, I will start glorifying to you something which you never tried, uh, some special Russian dish. I don't know what is the special Russian dish, but and I will say to you, it's very delicious. If you never tried it, uh, it will not have any effect on you because you don't have the preliminary samskara for this. The taste appears uh, from these samskaras. So therefore, for the hearing to be effective, uh, to be really uh, going deeply in the heart, the preliminary samskaras has to be uh, sustained or has to be left uh, within uh, our heart. And uh, therefore, the initial stage when, when a devotee comes to Krishna consciousness movement and, uh, you know, somebody starts glorifying to him the, uh, you know, Krishna Leela and he hears Krishna Leela and he says, you know, 
Yeah, so what? <laughs> you know, just some stories. It doesn't really have a deep impression upon his heart, doesn't really make any deep impression uh, uh, because there is no uh, preliminary impression. But uh, also sometimes we see that devotees come, uh, very new devotees come to ISKCON and they have amazing enthusiasm and amazing taste for it. It's only manifestation that they have the previous samskaras. Uh, from the previous life, uh, which are uh, actually uh, Shiva Jiva Goswami uh, gives a very specific term to these samskaras, the bhakti samskaras. He says it's not an ordinary samskaras, not material samskaras, not the same as material samskaras. Uh, Jiva Goswami, uh, Rupa Goswami says it's garha samskaras. It's samskaras in the soul proper, not in the mind. The material samskaras, material impressions are uh, there in the mind. But the spiritual impressions, any spiritual experience, genuine spiritual experience which we have, uh, they're kept in the soul. And unless uh, we accumulated certain amount of the spiritual samskaras, there will be no genuine taste no chance to have the taste. So the initial period of hearing is the period when we accumulate this preliminary samskaras and therefore it's called bahirmukha dasha. When uh, we're still averse of hearing, but somehow or other we force ourselves to do it. Because we understand that this is important, we understand that this is the process. Uh, and even though there is no taste. We still sit there and, you know, half asleep hearing something. <laughs> <laughs> there is no question of uh, transmission because the transmission of the taste uh, only takes place when, uh, when there is at least some preliminary samskaras. Then only uh, this uh, hearing can find uh, the proper ground uh, to to be received, so to speak. So this uh, Bahirmukha Dasha, it has to uh, go for some time. Uh, when, uh, when can we say that Bahirmukha Dasha is finished? And when the next stage of our spiritual development starts? Uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives a very interesting hint to this. He says that this preliminary hearing, it's uh, it's not really uh, bhakti yet. <laughs> in the beginning, when we just hear without much taste and without much understanding, uh, just because we're supposed to do it, because this is our religion, you know, we have to see it. this is this is the way, <laughs> this is this is the ritual which we have to do, and you know. Oftentimes, uh, our Bhagavatam classes, this is just, it's a very ritualistic activity. <laughs> you know, somebody reads something, he doesn't have any taste, his audience doesn't have any taste, and then he starts talking about something which he read on the internet, which, <laughs> which has some taste <laughs> to him. So, but still, nevertheless, uh, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, this is Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti. This is not bhakti yet, but this is bhakti unmukhi sukriti, the pious activity which ultimately will result into bhakti, which, which will prepare you to uh, result, uh, prepare you to uh, get bhakti. But the real bhakti comes, please listen very carefully, uh, because the next statement of Bhakti Vinod Thakur is of great importance. Uh, the real bhakti comes when we develop Shastriya Shraddha, and Shastriya Shraddha means intense hankering for hearing. Hmm. Shastriya Shraddha, uh, and this is the difference. Initial hearing is just casual hearing when we hear a little bit, uh, but when this desire to hear more and more and more appears, uh, and not just to hear, but to hear Shastra. 
And not just to hear Shastra, but to hear and to understand Shastra deeply, that means that the next stage is approaching. You get Shastriya Shraddha. And Shraddha already means uh, little taste. Shraddha is meaningless if there is no taste. There is no meaning to the word Shraddha if there is no taste. Uh, so initial Shraddha, which we usually have, is not really Shraddha, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, it's uh, Shraddha Praya or Shraddha Abhas. It's just a shadow of Shraddha because it does not really contain a very strong desire or eagerness for hearing. Mm. But nevertheless, it's very important and it's an initial stage which prepares us to uh, go to the next stage. Uh, so when we get this uh, 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 Shraddha, together with the desire, very strong desire, uh, whether I understand or not, uh, like Prabhupada, <laughs> uh, he gives a very interesting description of his own, uh, from his own life, his own example of this. He said, when I first met my Guru Maharaj, I couldn't follow what he's talking. I, something I understood, something I didn't understand because he used, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada used very high language. And Prabhupada says, I, I, I could hardly understand what he's talking about. <laughs> but very strong desire to hear and to understand his message, what he wants to uh, say to me was there. And that's the sign of uh, real Shraddha. If, uh, and Prabhupada, he was himself teaching his disciples. Once here in Vrindavan, Prabhupada had a room conversation and some Hindi-speaking guests came and Prabhupada started uh, talking with them in Hindi and some of his Western disciples were there and for some time they were sitting, couldn't understand anything and, uh, and they got up and wanted to get out. And Prabhupada said, what, what, what are you doing? They said, Prabhupada, we don't understand Hindi. You know, Prabhupada shouted on them and said, you sit anyway, uh, because you anyway don't understand what I'm talking about, whether I'm talking in English or in <laughs> Hindi. <laughs> so you just sit and hear. <laughs> so it means uh, if this desire, even if I don't understand anything, but still the desire is there, this desire is, is the sign that you are going to the next stage of spiritual development, which is called Shravana Dasha. The Shravana really starts uh, from this uh, Shastriya Shraddha. Uh, and the Lakshana or indicator of this um, Shastriya Shraddha, of the presence of Shastriya Shraddha is uh, very strong desire, despite even that I, I don't understand anything. Uh, I just want to hear this particular person uh, uh, until uh, and unless uh, I und uh, until I understand him. But then he said <clears throat> that there are two kinds of Shravana Dasha. Even when people have uh, this strong desire to hear Shastra, uh, they may hear in two different manners. One is called uh, Krama Shuddha Shravana Dasha and another is called Krama Hina Shravana Dasha. Uh, one is very methodical and systematic uh, hearing of uh, Shastra. And another one is uh, uh, very spontaneous, uh, chaotic, hearing of the Shastra. I'm hearing from here and from there and from here and from there. And then new Maharaj comes and new Maharaj tells something. And, and then I'm hearing from somebody else. And uh, the end result of it, I get completely bewildered. <laughs> totally confused, but have a wrong impression that I already know everything. That's the result of this Kramahina Shravana Dasha. It's a very detrimental for spiritual life. When you hear many different people, actually 
Srila Jiva Goswami, he very specifically says in Bhakti Sandarbha, that in the beginning you can hear many people. When you initially develop some attraction to hear Krishna Katha, but then at the next stage you stop hearing many people, you hear one person. <laughs> because only from hearing one person or at least one line, uh, you can get something more systematic. Because every, and it's of course difficult, I, I don't, please don't take me wrong, I don't mean to say that now you run away from any new Maharaja who comes and wants to enlighten you. <laughs> and in the first place you should have run away from me if you would follow very consistently what I am to say. <laughs> Uh, but at least uh, uh, the meaning here is that primarily we should hear and take seriously one person uh, in whom we develop a uh, very strong faith in his realization, in his personality, in his practice of bhakti. And um, uh, we should make him uh, one source of our inspiration or at least primary source of our inspiration uh, in uh, uh, studying Shastra. Because if we hear one person, there is a chance, uh, not necessarily, but at least there is a chance, and that uh, he will explain to us Shastra in a systematic manner. Whereas if we hear different persons, there is no chance. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's just not possible. And therefore, uh, this uh, Krama Hina and Krama Shuddha, Krama Shuddha Shravana Dasha, is uh, very important. Uh, and um, uh, what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, he says very interesting thing. He says and that uh, this Krama Hina Shravana Dasha, when we hear unsystematically, without uh, proper uh, understanding, we will never get the complete picture. What we will get as a, as a result of this unsystematic hearing, uh, we will get something from here, something from there. Uh, we, will, we may know some stories from Srimad Bhagavatam. We, by now, probably you know all the stories from Srimad Bhagavatam. But uh, if I ask you, please explain to me why this story is there in this particular place of Srimad Bhagavatam. What it is supposed to teach us. What we are supposed to understand and what we are supposed to feel after hearing this story. Uh, most probably uh, you will never be able to tell this. So this disconnected knowledge uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives a very uh, important reason. He says that when the knowledge is disconnected in this way about Krishna Leelas, the Krishna Leelas will not become the complete, uh, you will not get the complete picture or complete understanding and the interrelationship between the Krishna Leelas, between Leelas of different avatars, how they are strength together and how they are actually leading you to Krishna Lila and how Krishna Lila's are, uh, you know, giving you some experience. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is very specific. He says that if you hear unsystematically in this Akramahina Shravana Dasha, in the period of unsystematic hearing, then you will not get a spiritual experience. You will not get the experience of rasa. This, uh, this is Bhaktivinoda Thakur. I'm just repeating what he's saying. So, uh, and the experience of rasa is something which is, uh, which is supposed to take you out of this world and uh, bring you to, to the spiritual reality, which actually have to give you uh, the experience of reality of the spiritual world. <laughs> So, and that's, that's a very uh, important achievement or important result. It's one thing we, we're sitting here in this material world 
and we have all the desires which are there and we want to eat and we want to drink and we want to, and we have some sorrows in our head and this and that. And yes, we listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. Nice. Very good. <laughs> uh, but uh, when you listen to Srimad Bhagavatam in a very specific way with eagerness from uh, a person whom you have complete trust uh, systematically, uh, then this transmission of the taste takes place and you're transported into the realm of rasa. <laughs> you get uh, something uh, different. Uh, the Krishna Lila becomes reality for you. It's not just the book stories. It's not something from the book. It's something from the real world. <laughs> Uh, you, you see, you get the experience, and uh, that's what uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. And that is only possible when you hear systematically. It will not take place if you hear unsystematically, because uh, especially if we're talking about Srimad Bhagavatam, everything is, you know, is very important there. <laughs> And everything is ultimately designed in such a way uh, as to give you the real spiritual experience, the experience of rasa, or experience, what is rasa? Uh, it's experience of basically coming in contact with Krishna and his spiritual energy. So uh, that's why uh, it is um, uh, so important and... Uh, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he goes further and he says that at one point of hearing, what is very important, it's, it's also something very unusual and uh, unorthodox in ISKCON settings, but still uh, we have to say what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. He says that at one point you have... Uh, uh, to separate uh, two important kinds of lilas of Krishna, uh, Nitya lila and Naimitika lila. <laughs> because usually, in majority of the cases, when we hear about Krishna lila, we usually hear about his Naimitika lilas. Uh, some occasional lilas, which are very important, uh, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that specifically uh, Shravana Dasha, uh, if it's conducted properly, if, uh, if you properly hear scripture, then at one point of your spiritual development, uh, you have to develop taste. And, you know, Naimitika Lila of Krishna, they have definitely some taste. There is a lot of action, you know. He kills some demons and, you know, he's like a super man and he, you know, he uh, um, does something with the crane, with, uh, with Bakasura and he, he goes into the uh, mouth of Agasura and he expands himself and, and you know, Agasura's head burst and so many other things. And uh, Nitya Lila is, you know, Krishna gets up in the morning and he goes and takes breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and Mother Yashoda brings some warm water from the, you know, and he's taking bath. So <laughs> what's there? <laughs> what's, where is the taste? <laughs> no action. <laughs> nothing special, nothing spectacular uh, from the very superficial point of view. Uh, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> if you don't develop the taste for, for Nitya Lila of Krishna, you're nowhere, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, but again, it's a gradual development. I don't propagate this, but it's a, it's a gradual development which uh, has... Uh, to take place over a period of time. And, um, uh, uh, and then uh, Vijay Kumar asks his Gurudev, uh, uh, 
when this Shravana Dasha is completed, uh, when we can uh, understand and how we can understand that uh, this period of my uh, spiritual life uh, is uh, over and I can go further. And uh, again, Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives a very important sign of it. He says that when one realizes the eternality of Krishna Lila, uh, when one really understands that Krishna Lila is taking place right now, here, that Krishna Lila is not something, again, taken from the book uh, or uh, some ancient history, uh, when one gets this uh, uh, absolutely clear understanding that this is the Lila which is going on right now, then uh, you are successfully past this period of Shravana Dasha. <laughs> so I thought of uh, talking a little bit about this uh, high subject matters just because we have to understand uh, very clearly what we are doing. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna asks his father, and before this Govardhan Lila, he asks his father, Father, what are you doing? And then Krishna says, if somebody is doing something because of tradition or because of custom or because everyone else is doing, then there is a good chance that he will not get result. If, if, somebody, if somebody is not clear what is the goal, what is the prayogen of what he is doing, uh, then uh, uh, there is a good chance that he will miss the whole point. So I thought of bringing this topic uh, here in this esteemed assembly <laughs> uh, uh, just to uh, uh, somehow rather to bring your atta attention to the very purpose of systematically studying Srimad Bhagavatam. By systematically studying Srimad Bhagavatam with the help of uh, Sandarbhas of Jiva Goswami which is actually the systematic explanation of the philosophy and practice of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, and Sanskrit. But uh, the reason is very simple, to get the taste and ultimately to realize the eternality of Krishna's Leela. If you know perfect Sanskrit and know Sandarbhas and know Srimad Bhagavatam by heart, but don't really <laughs> realize this, you failed. You may get a good marks on the exams in Bhagavata Mahavidya Laya, <laughs> but it's not enough. So, and that's the science of hearing. We have to hear, we have to understand that during this hearing, the transmission of the taste has to take place. Uh, we have to be very clear about the ultimate goal of it. Uh, the eagerness or desire has to be there within our heart uh, for hearing, uh, understanding the uh, relevance and uh, urgency of this. It's, it's actually very urgent because we may die, believe it or not. Usually we don't believe that we die, but it will happen. Uh, and it will happen usually sooner than you expect. This is how it usually happens. <laughs> so, uh, therefore, all these components should be in place. And then, uh, even uh, when you get the taste for hearing and desire for hearing, still uh, you have to hear in a very systematic manner uh, with the desire to understand the complete whole. How the different pieces or different uh, parts of Srimad Bhagavatam, they are together uh, to bring us to this experience of uh, the eternality of Krishna Lila or the, uh, the highest absolute reality which is manifest as Krishna Lila. How each and every uh, teachings or details of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is actually there to, to bring us to this point. Then only uh, it will be successful. So that's... Uh, that's a little short talk on this topic, uh, how important it is to study Shastra systematically and what should be the goal of study. And then when you, when you realize the eternality of Krishna Lila, then you can get the diploma of Bhagavata Mahavidyalaya and you know, 
diploma of Mahabhagavata. <laughs> and then and then transmit the taste further. <laughs> but ultimately uh, this is this is what is supposed to to take place. Any questions? Yes. I read this thing also with John Dunmer, and I'm very happy that you spoke this part. Uh, but I didn't understand this point, but you know, Taco makes that, you know, that we make a distinction between nymitical leaders and nature leaders. You know, because we do hear the nymitical leaders. And it's specifically said that by hearing those leaders, certain obstacles will be destroyed. Yeah. Therefore, I said that at one point of our hearing, the taste for hearing uh, Naimitika Lila, Nitya Lila, will, very strong taste for hearing Nitya Lila uh, will awaken within our heart. Uh, in the beginning, uh, it may not be there and we shouldn't try to artificially kind of squeeze out the taste. Uh, if it's not there, it's not there. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that if you hear properly with the proper attitude and uh, hear systematically, then ultimately you will develop very strong interest towards Krishna as a person. And therefore, uh, like, for example, a very gross example, but still, nevertheless, when somebody is a fan of some, you know, pop star or somebody, somebody then he wants to know the minute details of how he lives and, you know, and it's very dear to his heart because it nourishes his relationship with this person. So in the same way, in the beginning, uh, you may have taste for, you know, some spectacular things, you know, he's so glorious and he's doing this and that. But then at the end, you want to know how he is like a person, as a person, how he is in his... Uh, intimate personal dealings, how he is uh, in the very close circle of his intimate friends, not how he, you know, performs on the stage when the millions of people hear him and cheer him and this and that. So this Naimitika deal is something like Krishna is on the stage a little bit and he is doing something spectacular. Uh, but, uh, you know, at one point, if your interest deepens in, in personality of Krishna, then uh, these details become very important for you, which may not be often of any importance now. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting also, you said that when we are hearing and we develop this uh, greed, we want to hear, then we want to hear from one person. This is Jiva Goswami says, yes. Yeah, but it is an important point. It is an important point, yes. <laughs> that, uh, you know, uh, we're hearing here and here and there, we're hearing here and there. It's all systematic. Yes. But yes. then you develop a grid. I want to hear systematic. Yeah. You know, and therefore we find... And therefore it, there is a primary, primary source, source of your inspiration will come to you, yes. Yeah. Also, the question comes up that, you know, you're hearing, and you say this is the primary stage, it's rather the dust. Yeah. But is it that you're always hearing this? In every stage? Yeah, it, it doesn't mean that we stop hearing, uh, no. but... Uh, when it is said that Shravana Dasha is the first stage, uh, it basically means that this is the main activity which is taking place yeah, there. Yeah, it will be continued in yeah. every step. Yeah, yeah. But then on the stage of Smarana Dasha, Smaranam will become very prominent. But it doesn't mean that you stop hearing. You it will continue. Hearing. Of course, of course. Even it in the spirit. Systematically, 
In the spiritual world, people also hearing, so it's no problem. Yes, yes. Systematically. Yeah, systematically. Systemat so once you enter into systematic hearing, you're going. You're going yeah. up. Yeah. You're going up. Yeah. Without the systematic hearing. Without the systematic hearing, you you will you will only eat prasadam. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot expect that it will develop immediately, but if if the speaker is qualified, then you will get the taste even uh, in the first uh, stages, initial stages. You will you will be attracted to a certain extent, a little bit, and this initial attraction. Therefore, it is said that the first stage is you know you meet with the devotee and you get attracted to a devotee and uh, you start listening to him and even though you don't understand you don't understand you don't have taste yet still by hearing him little by little the taste will come but it very much depends on the purity of a devotee or, or, or the purity of the message of the speaker yes so the initial contact is very important if the initial contact is proper then uh, then even though you may not you're still averse to hearing, but still you'll get some little taste. Some some taste uh, will be transmitted to you. You can put sense like you're unfortunate to say that you know one has to hear about nitrila uh, when one advances. So normally, what of explanation on Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, and I think there is some explanation. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it's dispersed. Nitya and Naimitika Lila are there together. Uh, like, for example, in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 15th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description how Krishna comes back from herding cows and how gopis run away and see him. And there are a couple of verses there. So it's all there in Srimad Bhagavatam, but it's all intertwined. The, uh, yes, it's in the, context, uh, in the context of other leelas. Uh, uh, but it's, it's definitely there. And when you hear systematically, uh, you will get... Uh, you will get an idea. And then, of course, Acharyas, they explain it in more detail how, how it goes. But uh, originally, everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's, it's definitely there. I think, uh, someone said to you, even Krishna's, this poor Lila, whatever Lila is happening here, is more attractive than what Lila is happening in the spiritual world. Uh, yes. He says this uh, because, yeah, because uh, something additional is happening here. Uh, but it's not it's more attractive. It's, um, uh, it would not be correct to say that it's more attractive. It's just, yeah, it's, this Baumalila is, is, is special. Baumalila is special because it has some additional features uh, which are not there, like, you know, but anyway, so you're fortunate. <laughs> you're not yet in the spiritual world. <laughs> when you give messages to hear from one person, 
So in this cross scenario, we have many acharyas and they have different ways uh, to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, we have to hear from them. So, uh, so for example, uh, 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 for a particular verse, they explain according to their mood. Mm -hmm. So as a sadhak, how we maintain one mood by hearing different acharyas? It's like this. It's simple. If you hear somebody, even, even Sanatan Goswami explains this. He says that if you hear somebody long enough, then you develop the ability to filter uh, uh, out something which is not compatible with this mood and only uh, get or extract something which is compatible with the mood. If you hear long enough uh, somebody who is the primary source of your spiritual development and spiritual um, inspiration, then by hearing others, uh, you will hear how uh, your own guru speaks through them. And you will disregard some things which are not compatible with, with him. Like, for example, Prabhupada, uh, when a conductor, train conductor, uh, told him, Swamiji, why are you printing these magazines? Magazines people read and then throw out. Uh, why don't you print books? Prabhupada thought, this is my Guru Maharaj speaking through this train conductor. <laughs> why? Because uh, Prabhupada had filter. <laughs> and he knew this is something which his Guru Maharaj would tell him. And he, he knew that this is, this is his. And if train conductor would say something else, he probably would not, <laughs> would disregard it. But this he took seriously because he listened his guru long enough and uh, with intense enough feelings to understand what is according to his mood and what should be taken and what should be disregarded. Long enough. Long enough. Long enough and with and with uh, enough eagerness. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, question. Uh, is it possible to achieve this um, last stage about which you say that understand about eternity of Krishna uh, Lila without uh, of, uh, Harinam Sankirtan, which is... No, it's not possible. Harinam Sankirtan is implied. Harinam Sankirtan, even uh, Sri Jiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandarbha, he says, mm, uh, when he speaks about Shravana, uh, not Shravana, and he speaks about Smarana, uh, because sometimes, in, especially in Vrindavan, people say that you have to meditate and you have to do shravana, uh, smaranam. Uh, Sri Goswami specifically says, Sankirtana aparityagena. Uh, you should not give up Sankirtana. <laughs> sankirtana has to be there all the time. And when Rupa Goswami gives his final advice, uh, Upadesha Saram, he also says the same thing. Tam, tam nama rupa charitadi sukirtananu smritior kramena rasanama nasini yoja. Uh, so, Tishtan Vraja, yes, you're already doing this. So, <laughs> so tam nama rupa charitadi sukirtananu, you do kirtan of all these things, and then smritior kramena rasanama. By, uh, in a certain order, your mind will be engaged in, in remembering. So the first should be Sukirtan or Sankirtan. Sankirtan has always to be there. Sankirtana aparityagena smaranam kuriyat. Okay, thank you. Okay.